Hey, everybody. I'm Steph. I'm Michael. Today we're checking out Run, Run, Run. Whoa. <laughs> but stay here. But, but stay here. Yeah. From 25th Century Games. Yes. This game plays one to four players and has a box play time of approximately 30 minutes. So It is currently on Kickstarter. What? I know. And you can get this game for $25. Wow. But you know what? Not just that. What? On the Kickstarter, it's a import collection that Chad is bringing over for 25th Century Games. Wow. There's a ton of amazing games on this Kickstarter. So, including this. Including this. Wow. Including Hamster Roll, which is a longtime fa fan favorite dexterity game that I'm so excited he's decided to uh take on himself to bring distribution to the u.s with new pieces if you have hamster roll if you have hamster roll i believe there are four new pieces i know it's amazing that's what it says yeah uh so per player the link is in the chat um but yeah definitely check it out there's also a couple of mandu games which i absolutely love uh scott uh jack Lowe and hyde versus scotland yard and van helsing and dracula versus van helsing love those games very much so just you got to check out this kickstarter but well, you know what I'm going to say. If Jill Fia were here, yes. she would know. Yes. Don't wait, or it'll be, be too late. late. Go uh -huh. ahead and back yes. this and all those other games on Kickstarter. Absolutely. We saw Chad uh, recently at Tantrum Con, and there he was like, "Hey, do you want to check out Run Run Run, which is going to be on our Kickstarter?" So here we are. Kickstarter is this day two. They've already funded, so just got to go back it, and then you'll get the games right. So. I'm excited to show this off because we just learned it. And now we can show you all about Run, 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 which is a Bruno Cathala game. Yes. Right? So, and yes. Cathala and uh, Anthony Perrone. Um, yeah. But uh, this is a cooperative uh, sort of puzzle game. Yep. Um, where you have uh, tile management and uh, you are trying to make sure that the mummies do not break into the final room and get unlimited power <laughs> because then everybody loses the game. Yes. So got to manage these mummies, man. Um, before we start off on the, uh, on this prototype version of the game. Well, it might be. Yeah. Okay. Um, because the Kickstarter version is going to like this has, this has little wood critters. Which are cute. The Kickstarter version is going to include acrylic pieces so that's as cool. well. That's pretty cool, yeah. Um, and each of the figures is going to be uh, unique. Okay. Instead of the same, uh, instead of the same uh, <laughs> artwork. So, does it come with a Michael soundboard app? I would love that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, so thanks to Chad for providing us this uh, prototype version of Run, Run, Run. But he didn't give it to us in exchange for this video. He gave it to us because he knows we like to play all, all the games. games. So, hey, let's get into uh, this game and all the rules. Absolutely. So this is a draft version of uh, the rules, which are subject to change. Since Steph has this here, I should probably move things around. So um, you are going to take all of the room tiles and uh, shuffle them up and uh, deal out uh, a number to each player based on player count. For a two-player game, each player is going to get five of the room tiles. You're also going to shuffle up all the sarcophagus tokens and all of the room mechanism tokens and all, uh, you're going to put all the little uh, torch mechanism torches in a stack and all of the regroup tokens. Going to put those in a stack as well. All those mummies are trying to get right here to uh, the room where all of the uh, Pharaoh's treasures and artifacts uh, are kept in the in Pharaoh's vault, and you want to make sure that no mummy reaches this location. Uh, choose a cat venturer and place the corresponding cat venturer meeple on the space in front of the Pharaoh vault. Um, each of the cat venturers has a special ability. And whenever rolling dice, you're going to get some kind of special ability whenever you roll the little question mark symbols. 
Uh, you'll also start off with five torch tokens. So you can light your way through all of these rooms. So, um, we win if we wake up the boss mummy. There are three boss mummies in the box. You're going to choose one of them at random and put it face down so you don't know which one it is. The other four normal mummies you are going to shuffle up and put in a stack. Just like so. If we defeat the boss mummy um, and eliminate all the other mummies, then we win the game. And obviously, like I mentioned, we lose if a mummy reaches the Pharaoh's vault. So, um, Steph, uh, you are going to go first. On your turn, you must always perform these two steps in this order. First, the mummy actions, and then the player action. So, uh, the first thing you're going to do um, is you are going to roll all of the mummy dice um, that are currently next to the mummies. The mummies start off with a strength of one. So, um, there are three sides with no figure and three sides with mummy figure. So, Steph is going to roll that as the first action on her turn. Steph is going to roll that as the first action on her turn. Like so. No. And notice, she rolled a mummy symbol. For every mummy symbol that you roll, you are going to move each of the mummies that are out here one step towards the vault. Hey, we have no mummies. That's okay. In addition, you are going to place a heart for each of these symbols onto the top mummy on the stack. So, uh, if the mummy moves multiple spaces in a turn, the mummy will always stop in this room before the vault. If the mummy moves again the following turn, boom, the mummy is going to get into the vault. So, um, whenever this mummy fills up with five hearts, you're going to flip this mummy over, and the mummies will have abilities on them. For example, this, Steph calls this the zebra mummy. <laughs> Um, each of these mummies will have some sort of abilities on them. For example, this one will add an extra mummy die. So if this mummy is active, not only will we have our normal one die, we're going to have two dice that we're rolling at the start of every turn. In addition, this mummy is going to go one extra step toward the vault, even if we didn't roll any mummy symbols. So, as soon as it hits the fifth heart, boom, this mummy is active, and then the next mummy is going to start gaining hearts. Basically, the five hearts that woke this mummy up are going to be right here, and you've got to remove the hearts from this mummy to defeat it. Once you defeat the mummy, uh, its abilities no longer take effect. So, we will shuffle this mummy in. There are four different mummies, and hey, look, there are four different mummy figures that are available. Whenever the mummy appears, you can place it anywhere in the vault, but it's always going to move towards the vault. You can place it anywhere in, uh, on any tile in, uh, the, um, in the area. So, let me put the heart back on the mummy. Generally, you want to put it the furthest away. Oh, absolutely the furthest away, for sure. Yeah, it's a really nice production mm. value. Yes. Yeah, so it's a really nice game. As a player action, uh, you are going to either explore or fight or cooperate. So, to explore, you're going to choose one of your room tiles and uh, place it uh, into... Uh, the table to expand the maze. Now notice there's a little opening right here. This is the only place where we can play a tile. So let's talk a little bit about these tiles. Um, if you want to place a tile next to this, you must place it so that there's an open area towards an open area. You cannot place an open area towards a closed area. So you're going to try to want to make things sort of 
looking like this. Um, then you're going to move your cat venturer up to three spaces. Now, if you don't want to place a tile into the maze, or if you can't reach anywhere three spaces away, you could use the explore action to just move three spaces. You don't have to place a tile from your hand. Um, so you can just use it uh, specifically to move. But if you're going to add a, a room to the maze, you're going to have to lay a tile down, move your cat venturer to that space, and then light up the room that you just placed. So notice we've got five torches. What happens if we don't have a torch to put in this room? Well, that means the mummies are going to get stronger. So you're going to put a heart onto the top mummy. So, um, and if it's the fifth heart, guess what? The mummy's going to awaken. So try not to do that. Um, if you can't add a heart because all the mummies are already active, they're going to move one space closer to the vault. So if you can ma uh, manage, uh, oh, let me say this. For, uh, finally, apply the effects of the new room. M a lot of them are just going to be um, these mechanism tiles. If you can line up three if you can line up let me put this like so if you can line up three different symbols like so to where they're in a triangle you activate a door mechanism that's this gear here you're going to flip this over and something bad is going to happen these at least we've always seen bad things happening on uh on these door mechanisms. So we're gonna place this uh, here, flip it up and see what happens. Um, once we have three door mechanisms open, that's gonna wake the boss mummy, at least in a standard game. In a advanced game or a difficult game, you need four door mechanisms. In an insane game, you need five. But in our game, we're just gonna have three. Now I should mention, we lost horribly when we played this game. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so you are also going to leave this mechanism token here to remind you, yourself that all three of these rooms have already been used for a mechanism. You could not come along later and place a tile right here and reuse this again for another triplet for another mechanism. You have to have an entirely new batch of three tiles for that. So that's room mechanism. How do you get more torches? Well, that's when you need a torch mechanism. And to get that, you're gonna need to put three tiles that are exactly the same. For example, you can have these two tiles and this tile right here. Look, I've got three tiles that are the same. So you're going to take this torch mechanism token and you're going to put this on it and get five extra torches. So uh, you can indeed chain something like this. Let's see if I can get this in there. You can indeed use. Um, tiles like this so that you can have a triple over here and a triple right here. You just can't use, you can't have a door mechanism using tiles that use another door mechanism, but you can have a torch mechanism sharing uh, tiles that also use a door mechanism. So this is a valid placement. Let's take all of these away and shuffle these back up. Other ones that you might encounter are rooms that are already lit. If a room has a torch on it, it's already lit. You don't have to worry about that. And you might also find sarcophagus tiles. Sarcophagus tiles will allow you to pick up a sarcophagus token. 
which has good stuff on it. You can save this token until you want to use it. So, uh, it, most of these uh, torch tiles seem to have a lot of openings. Yeah, except for this one. The sarcophagus, well, the, as I'm saying, the torch tiles have a lot of openings. The sarcophagus tokens usually have just one opening. Make sure not to close off all of your openings, because if you do, you're going to die inside the maze. Aladdin so. style. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Well, yeah, but the the, the the sarcophagus, what is it? Sarcophagus? Yeah, that is already lit with a torch, too. Yes, those are already lit with a torch. Yeah. But if you see one of those that has a torch on it with a lot of, uh, usually those will have a lot of openings on it. So, um, now, remember when I said that you can move three spaces for free? Um if you need to move a fourth space to get to your tile you placed, then you, or a fifth space or a sixth space, you can discard tiles from the top of the draw pile, just discarding them out of the game in order to move additional spaces. Keep in mind, this is all the tiles you're going to get in the entire game. So once those run out, you got to make do with what you have. And that's not going to be easy because, hey, guess what? When you're attacking mummies, you're going to need these tiles. So, um, all right, Steph, you have yeah. rolled a mummy. I did. And you're probably going to want to explore for your first action. So you can go ahead and show how that's done. Now, obviously, it's only going to be one space away. So we're not going to have to discard any of these off of the draw pile. Because we have, you know, we have, we're awful close to the room you're about to play. So, I think I learned a little bit from our first play, and we want to make sure we have lights. We want to make sure we have torches. Oh, of course. But what I had a lot of last game was the dead end tiles. Yes. So, I had nowhere to play them. I know you, this might not be your favorite thing for me to do, but I'm going to do this. See? Just because... I'd like to have options for placing the dead end tiles if we have any. Sounds good. All right. I'm going to draw a tile, but you have all the tiles. Wim says, how did you get in if there are no exits? Well, that's an excellent question. No, it's like Aladdin. <laughs> you, they went in through the front door, but then it closed on them. Oh, so that's you have, what You have is. to find the exit, right? That's what it is. So, explore is one of the options. Um... The well, before I go into the second option, let me mention what happens when this boss mummy wakes up. You're gonna flip this over, you're gonna put the matching figure on any room like you do with any other mummy. But here's the cool thing any mummies that have not yet activated, poof, they are gone out of the game. If the mummy is on the board, however, it's gonna stay. So, um, waking up the boss mummy could be good, could be bad. So the second thing you can do is to fight. Let's say that Steph had a mummy on her space. I'm going to give you some spare tiles that you can play with for funsies. Okay. So, if you are on the space with the mummy, or if you are close to the mummy, like let's say that you are a couple, you're a space away from the mummy, you can move up to three spaces to get to the mummy, and then you can fight the mummy. By discarding um, room tiles from your hand to determine the number of combat dice you're going to roll. Now, this is going to be based on the number of exits on the tile. For example, if she discarded this fantastic tile, there are six exits on this tile. So she gets to roll six dice. But if she were to discard one of those sarcophagus tiles or maybe some of these other tiles here, this would get... Steph, only two dice. And this would also get her two dice. So she could roll four dice. So now you can roll a maximum of six. So um, the same rules apply if you have to go one, two, three, four tiles in order to get to the mummy. The same rules apply for discarding tiles off the top of the draw stack. Uh, so that those rules will always apply if you want to go extra spaces. So Let's say Steph discarded 
this to get six dice. She's going to roll all six dice, and we're going to count up how many of these symbols there are, and that's how much damage we do to the mummy. Terrible. Anything that shows this is going to give you an extra tile. Anything that shows this will allow you to move the mummy one step away from the vault, the Pharaoh's vault. Hopefully you have spaces to move this way. Yeah. Um, and finally, the question mark will allow you to do whatever your special move is. For example, my special move is to get a torch for every question mark that I roll. Steph's special is to get a sarcophagus tile for every uh, question mark that she rolls. Now, you can spend a torch from your supply. This is a shared supply. Anyone can use these. She can spend any number of torches to re-roll a number of dice. So if she doesn't like uh, any of these four dice here, she can spend four torches to re-roll four dice, or three torches to re-roll three dice, or two torches to re-roll two dice. Now, catch, keep this in mind, you get one opportunity to choose your re-roll. You can't re-roll one, and then re-roll one more, and then re-roll one more. That's not allowed. You get one opportunity to do the re-roll. You're going to take the hearts, from below the mummy, and if there are no more hearts left below the mummy, you can discard the mummy off uh, and remove the mummy card. Hey, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um. So, uh, you might face several mummies at once. If you do, you can uh, distribute the damage as you like amongst all of the mummies. Hopefully you don't have four mummies on your tile. Yeah, that that would, would be bad. That would not be great. The final action you can do is to cooperate. If you're going to cooperate, there are three opportunities to cooperate. These are all in a stack. Let's say Steph is way over here on the map and pretending that there are tiles around. Um, and she decides to cooperate. Anyone who is willing and able to cooperate to take a break and regroup can join you in your current room for free. And this move is free. You don't have to spend any extra tiles from the draw pile to get to um, the rest of your team. Then you're going to draw one of these tiles. For example, if I were to draw this, hey, look, we're going to get five room tiles. And then we can distribute them as we like between everyone that decided to regroup. Now, you can only do this three times during the game. There is an optional achievement rating. If you finish the game and you don't use any of your uh, regroup tokens for cooperation, then you get uh, a platinum victory. Uh, two remaining will give you a gold victory. That's a silver victory. If you use them all, that's a bronze victory. But hey, that's just optional. It's good enough just to survive which Steph and I did not do. No, we're not good enough. At the end of your turn, no matter which of those three actions you did, you are going to get one pile, uh, one tile from the draw stack. Um, even if you did not use a tile from your hand. So keep that in mind. Um, as soon as you have completed three or four or five door mechanisms and have uh, defeated the boss mummy and all the other mummies that have appeared in the vault, then you have won the game. And that is pretty much it. Um, playing it in solo mode is just like playing it in uh, multiplayer mode. Um, whenever you take a regroup action, you won't have anyone to join you on your tile, but you get all the benefits on that tile. You don't have to share them with anyone. And there's not a maximum hand size. So you can just do what you want. Do what you want. Oh, wait a second. I just put your uh I just put your um No, I have my four. Torch tile that you had put. Yeah, it was a four-way torch tile. Was it like that? I think it was that maybe. Yeah. So Steph, if you will sort those around a little bit. So Steph has already uh didn't didn't need to put a torch on there. Nope. You're good to go. I'm good to go. I need to look at my five tiles now that I've actually, and she's going to draw a tile to refresh her hand. 
All right. Right, right. Let's see what I can do here. Well, I'm actually already pretty darn good at getting torches. So I am going to do this. One, two. Nice. I can get there. I'm going to put a torch down, and my turn is done. I'm going to... Whoops, hold on. Wait a minute. I forgot the mummy's turn. Yep, of course, the mummies are waking up. Yep. All right, first thing you do. Sorry. And a third one for the mummies. Want to do this? Ooh. Well, we're not getting our doors, but we are getting our... We are getting our torch mechanisms ready to go. Stuff is changing her mind. Good deal, I got. Looks good. We're ready to possibly get that. Ready to possibly. Roll it. I'm rolling this. Good. Didn't get it. Good. <laughs> good. Well, sorry, Steph. Can't help you out. Yeah. Well, tried. I am... I think I'm going to do it that way. I will move here. I will light it up. I will get a tile. Okay. You. I'm going to mummy. 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 No mummy. I mean, we should like extend it out a little bit. <laughs> and you get a sarcophagus tile. Yeah. How about that? And you can use that whenever you want. Hey, that's an extra hit. I like it. I like it too. And refresh up. Time to roll for the mummies again. All right. If we roll blank, it's no problem. It's no problem. It's no problem anyway. Right? <laughs> All right. Hey, guess what? It's time. That. It's time for one of these. Nice. I go here. I place a torch. It's a door mechanism. Uh-oh. We're bad going things to happen. reveal. Whoa. It's a mummy die. It's a mummy symbol. It's uh, just like the symbol on one so of those. So if there dies. are any mummies on the board, they would move. They would move and replacing one of these. Yeah. Just as if we had rolled the die. But that's and one of our successes. I refresh. That's one door success. We need three. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, guess what happened? He ding, wakes ding, up. Ding, ding. No, we need those. Oh, yeah. Yes. So, the first thing we must do, there's four and five. The first thing we do is we have to discard a random tile from someone's hand. Can be Where do you want? You want it to be you? That's fine. Sure. I'm not in love with my tiles. How about this one? Getting rid of a... Oh, it's such a good one. Hate it. I would be in love with your tiles. I should have I should have volunteered as tribute. Oh, you seemed upset about it. Mm, I had no... Okay, so if I... I had no reaction. If I want to go to the him and fight, I have to... Uh, first... What? First, we place him in the maze. I assume you want to place him here, though. I guess you could place him here if you want to do it now. I was going to go fight him. If you're going to go fight him, then this is the room you probably want to place him in because that's three away. Yeah. So, hold on. We're, fin we're finishing everything on the, on the mummy tile. We add a mummy die. Now you may go fight him. One, two, three. Place it like this so everyone can see. And... You must discard tiles. How about a big old six? Might as well. Might as well, for sure. How about one, two, three? And you can lure him away, and you can get a tile. All right. I guess I'll just keep it. All right. That is uh, three. I assume you're going to lure him towards me. Yeah, I was. Sounds good. Um, move your cat venture and the mummy well, to an adjacent room. Let me get my my token first. Okay, so you're gonna get a token. 
It is times two. Could kill it. Well, well, I don't know the order for those operations. Want me to look? Sure. I mean, it's make. I mean, in what order do you apply the results? So if you use the ability and get one, I guess you can do them in whatever order you want. I guess we should ask Chad about that. That would be a question to ask. Well, Hello, Cosmic B. If you can do them in the order of your choosing is you get your token. Yeah. And then this is times two. Is it, does it multiply one of yours or is it two hits? Uh, Do not see. I do not see the iconography. There it is. Before before you attack um the mummy, discard this token to double the amount of damage you inflict. Okay. To double the amount of damage. That's inflict one additional damage when you attack a mummy okay. for the other ones. So, so I think you just hold on to all of it. The question is, should I try and reroll that for a hit so I could use that? We have one token. We have one torch. Okay. And hey, you know what? I make torches. All right. You you hit them then. So that okay. So this you as I mentioned, move your cat venture and the mummy to okay. that space. So you're going with him. Great. And I grabbed one. And end of turn. Yeah. Well, three damage. And three damage. Ta-da. I'm going to roll two dice, unfortunately. The most he can go is two spaces away. Oh, look at that. It's a big zero. We might actually... I'm not going to say it. It's not going to say it. Hey, Cosmic Beat. How's it going? I already said that. I didn't. What? Oh, let's see here. My tiles are not great. I will discard a couple of tiles for four dice. And hopefully we get something good. And that is not something good. Well, I can't lure him away. I could try to re-roll it. There are three spaces with damage. I would do it. I that will it. kill him off. Unfortunately, not getting what we want here. I get three room tiles. That's horrible. Well, that was. Well, I'll just go kill him on my turn. Really bad. All right, so that's three and one to end my turn. You must roll two dice, sadly. Blank. That's fantastic. How often did that happen to us in our other game? Rarely. Rarely. I don't think I'd use that times two. I think we save it for the biggie. Oh, well, yeah. No point. I only need one damage. That's right. You only need one damage. Question is, what should these do? Do you have any green symbols? Am I allowed to ask that? I believe the answer is um, it is possible to uh, discuss your choices with your adventurers. You always have the last word. You may openly discuss your intentions, but you may not show the tiles from your hand to the other players, nor describe them precisely. You can point your finger to a specific room to let other players know you would like to reserve this room for a future turn. Which does not stop the other players if they want to but ignore you. you. Have a green? I'm not see that discussion. Describes details of the tiles, and say, so okay. I'm not Fine. sure I'm allowed to I'll say. I'll just do that for two dice. You're going to get just two dice. Yeah. I have this if I need it. The one extra one damage, yes. What'd you do? Well, you got a sarcophagus tile, and you can lure, but you don't probably don't want to lure. So I'm just going to use that. And using it to do the one damage. That does get rid of him, and I think that that is a good play. I might as well get two tiles with that. Token. And then one More. to grow on. Yeah. Lots of tiles now. This is used. I'm down to one die, which is great. 
because I just rolled another heart. All right, well, we've used this. I want to sort of continue on. Main problems that we're all out of torches. Well, I'm going to do this that stuff's really going to be happy about. Yeah. I move here and I can't light it. Therefore, the mummies get stronger. Boo. I grab a tile off the top and it is your turn. Nothing. Okay. I'll play. Yay! This. Moving two spaces. She cannot light. Oh. So, the order is place the tile, move your cat, light the room, apply the effect. So, can't light the room first. Then we have three in a row, which gets us a torch mechanism, which gets us Five torches. That's fantastic. Seems good. Seems good. I got a tile. Yes, you do. Got so many tiles. Whoa. Here's the roll. It's a big nothing. So I don't want to like... Combine this together because then the mummies will have free reign to go wherever I sort of wanted to go back and forth to have to get to out out and about. But I don't have what I need, sadly. Sort of need a little bit of room here. Depending on what I do. I'm hoping you've got something. I've got lots of good things pasty. to play. So I'm going to go here. Moving here. Lighting the place. Now, uh, keep in mind, you never have to light this room once you've already taken the penalty for placing uh, the part for the dark. So keep that in mind. You never have to, like, if even if I go through this room again, I don't have to light it. I have to light new rooms, which is what I did. And one tile to grow on. Okay. I need a die. Your die is right here. And that is another heart. That's the fourth heart. We might get our second door mechanism on before the mummy pops out. We're going to do that. That looks really good. Dum dum dum. We light the room. We place a door mechanism, and it is a trap. Two torches lost. That is a trap, isn't it? Bye, JT. Bye, JT. All right. Well, that is gone, and uh, no, not gone. It needs to go on here. Nope. 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 Sorry. All right. I don't have the tiles I want. This is a three way. This that is a three way. However, I'm four spaces away from it. Uh-oh. It's time Do... for another mummy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, go ahead, and, this way. go ahead and move it. I wasn't going to put it there, but you can. Okay. All right, slide these off. Shoop, just like that. And we get the zebra mummy. Oh, he auto moves. Yes, he will. He will start auto moving. Well, 
I'm going to put him on my tile. Uh, I could fight him on my turn. Okay, sure. And maybe get us some more torches so we don't have to worry about those things. Okay. So I've got four. What's the other two I want to do, though? And two is six. So, yeah, add a die. Does he move as soon as he shows up or no? Add a die and he begins to auto move. Yes, uh, we, we, he has two dice, but he doesn't, he does not move when he shows up. He will start moving whenever the move happens. So, double checking this. Um, if a mummy, in, uh, let's see, move all mummies, then place a heart. So place a heart happens after uh, move all mummies. So he is in my room. He will start auto moving next turn, especially if I don't kill him. Whoa. Hmm. That was a. Uh, no torches. Kill. <laughs> but. Kill zone. Kill zone. <laughs> I wish we got something for that. I mean, Yahtzee! <laughs> I mean, that was six hits. Dancing does he says, hey everyone, this game looks fun. Yeah. Well, hey, guess what he's not gonna do? Auto move. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. All right, that is my entire turn. And take a towel to grow on. Hey, Steph is rolling them hearts. We haven't had to use the regroups. Can we do it? The thing is, we could do... <laughs> Wim says, what? Uh -huh. we... Yahtzee, I say. We can like, win this thing in like a second. I play the right title. <laughs> you have doomed us! Whoa. I needed a torch. Hey, how about a torch? All right. Uh -huh. And one to grow on. Roll it. Dang. That's another one. What? What? All right. Well, <laughs> can't really help you. I can. I mean, do you have a blue? I... It's probably worth spending no. extra stuff to get there. Except that's not a long trip. Shouldn't we like stock up a little bit <laughs> or no? I think we got it. I have times two. I, I don't have a blue. Okay. Well then, I don't know. I mean, he's not going to come next turn. He's not going to come next turn. This is lit. So I'm going to get... One of these. Oh, look. A couple of tiles. Might as well use it now. Can I get one to grow on? Yeah. Seems good. That'll help me fight him when it's time. And that's to you. Whoa. Ooh. You are destroying the world. Nope, you did it wrong. Uh, I don't remember where they were because you destroyed the world. All right, I will... Looks do... like he's not out yet. No, I will come over here. That's really this. good. Do this since you can't. I can't. Otherwise, I would have. That's going to get us five torches. Yeah, other plans, but this is fine. I mean, this, the torches let, uh, let us re-roll if we have to yeah. when we fight the Biggie Bad. I'm not saying it's bad. When we fight Biggie Bad, it's going to be really helpful. Did you get one to grow on? I'm going to lay you down again so everyone can see. Looks like a third heart. I don't know. I feel like you should be able to say, like, if you have a tile. But not the directions of your exits, I guess. Nah. I mean, okay, fine. Uh, How far away am I? Asterisk. Let's just do it. Say it now. Three. I'm three. I'm six away. We talk too much. This game is an asterisk. One, two, three. I am six away from here. Pretty far. 
Should I do it or should I do an alternate move? You can do an alternate move. I mean, I'm still going to have to go at least four. To do anything. To do anything. Well, or you just move and just take a tile and do nothing else. Because you can do that. I can do that. You are three away. Mm. One, two, three. I'll get ready for the big fight. Okay. He ready. You know what? I think it's worth it. It's one more. I think, I think one more is worth it. Sure. I think. So you, we're losing another tile for that? One tile. Not another tile. We're losing one tile. One tile. Yeah, too easy. Because I want this, which is to hit. That's good. I'll take it. Pass that to you, and I'll take one to grow on. Nothing. Well, he doesn't come out yet. Two. Are we doing it? Unless you don't want to. I'm fine with it. He's not coming out yet, but I'm fine with it. We got this. Uh, so technically it could this guy could come out and we have a, a bad problem if this is super bad. It's gonna, it's gonna be like lose two torches. Lose three tiles. That's not so bad. Is that from our hand or from that is, the deck? Let's find out. It's a really good question. I let's see. One of those symbols means discard a room tile. Players can decide who should discard the tiles. But remember, you're not allowed to reveal exactly which room tiles you have. Okay, so that's probably it. We just need to do it three times. Yes. So, oh, when the mummy... So when the mummy came up... When the mummy came up, it was random. This one is not random. It just says discard a room tile. Okay. Well, I can do that. And remember, it says you're not allowed to reveal which ones you have. I've got stuff I can discard for sure. Yeah, me too. But I mean, you have you get like more sarcophagus tokens. I just get torches, and we have torches, so I could discard these three. Sure, it's up to you though. Well, I have six tiles. You still have a whole bunch, so I have five after discard. Yeah, sure, just do it. How about three sarcophagus tiles? Uh, those are not great to have right now. Okay, that's cool. So the this guy disappears. I was worried. We would end up with... Yeah, the one that gives two hearts. This, because it gives two hearts. This is the timing on this, guys. He gets the two hearts. The mummy appears. Then the boss appears. Yeah. So keep in mind, that would have happened. Yeah, but you have to take the chance. Otherwise, you have to take the chance. It's eventually going to come out anyway. So there are three different mummy figures. That one is this one right here. He starts off with a whopping... 16 wow. hearts. Do, 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 Is it my turn to eight, kill two seven, Eight, nine, ten. And that is probably random. I am not in a position to look in the rules yet. I am still adding 16. All right, let's look in the rules and see exactly what this mummy boss does. This one... When the boss wakes, players must discard a total of two random room tiles from their hands. The boss always moves one room more than the number shown on the mummy dice, and he cannot be moved by a lure symbol. It's missing the um, it's missing the iconography on this tile, but that's what it is. All right, here, pick one. So. I have, a lot of, yours? I have a lot of duds and one good one, so just don't kill the good one. Um. Well, then you could choose for me. Dead? Yeah. Okay. Sure. I might not have any good ones. How about those two? I have a couple of two drops. Bad, then. Not bad. Okay, so he shows up. He shows up. I assume he will show up as far as he can, which is with you. I agree. So, he is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten away. It's pretty far. 
Let's hope that that's enough. It's fine. And you can't lure him back. So the question is, I can't get my question marks. I should have done this too. You can't get your question mark. That's right. Why? Because isn't that what that is? No, I just... Were you not here? I guess not. All right. For those of you who weren't paying attention when I was reading out the boss rules, the boss cannot be moved by a lure symbol. The iconography is missing from this, but this is a lure symbol. Ah. Yes. There is another one that will not allow you to uh, use special abilities. It's this with a question mark inside, also missing from our demo copy. Um, oh. So. Which is why Steph thought it was that. But it is not that. This is, f- what, six? Yeah. So five plus one, discarding for six. I might as well use the times two and hope I roll. And hope you do really well. And you can use the torches. We have them now. Well, that's okay-ish. Should I roll some? Um, I mean, we're probably not going to use many of these torches again. I'm going to probably get more back with question marks. You want to do all three? Yeah. I think we do all three. I, like I think it's a good plan. Uh, looks like five times two is ten hearts. Well, if I rolled any question marks, I would get these tiles back. These. Yes. Tokens, which are good, but yes. I didn't roll any anyway. And the lure is wasted, which is fine. I get it. Uh, now, note, we could not have used this to re-roll the lure because you we get one get shot at re-roll. Yeah. Well, he's only got six left, so that's pretty darn fantastic. Wim says, this game is easy. <laughs> uh, no, we, we lost. lost. <laughs> we lost horribly. <laughs> He is going to move no one. spaces plus one. Yeah. Eh. Oh, you can get to him. I can indeed get to him with a one, two, three. Boom. What's up, dude? Kill the dog. That is two, five, six. <laughs> Let's go. I'm out of tile. <laughs> I need five plus one. Not a How about way. not a lot of nothing? All right, I am going to add one. Should I? Sure. He's not moving very quickly. I'm going to add one to reroll this one. Well, I get three torches, which will be good for three rerolls for you. And I'm going to do three damage, leaving three damage left. So we got run over yesterday because we had two of these dice that were always rolling run. They were always they, rolling run. This was moving too. So it's like they were like, he was like speedy. So I got one and one to grow on. So that's all I've got in my hand. Not very many. I got this. You got this. This is gone. He moves two. He moves one plus one. Boop, boop. And I'm going to move three. One, two. Yeah, I got you. Jump to him. All right, what do I got? I got four, five, six. Whoa! Pour them into your hands. You got this. You need three strikes. That looks like three strikes. Boom. Boom. And two tokens. And we did not use any of any of our abilities, so that would be called a platinum win. Oh, nice. Ta-da. And that is a successful run of run, run, run. run. <laughs> we were successful at running. Ah. Running all over yeah. the maze to take out those mummy dogs. It's cool because they look like the little Anubis dog, but they're dogs <laughs> against the cat venturers. Um, the other mummies are a little weaker, but have stronger abilities. This is the one that we got hit with. Yeah. It's only 12 health, but he always moves two. And he has those, the two. no lure and no special abilities traps. Yeah. And I, I, my special ability the last game was every question mark was the damage, which was great. But, um, 
This one is 13 hearts, cannot be moved by a lord, does get the extra move, and makes us discard four random room tiles. Those are all three of the bosses. Hey, who knows if there's going to be any more. Maybe a special Senor Azul. They might be jackals. I don't Mummy. know. Mummy. Could be. Well, they. it makes sense that it's cats versus dogs. But anyway. <laughs> Super cute. Currently on Kickstarter for U.S. and Canada shipping uh, from 25th Century Games. There's a whole bunch of really great imports happening on that Kickstarter, so you better be sure to check it out. Um, here's a link for those interested. And don't wait, or it'll be too late. Super fun. Definitely challenging. Uh, I say that we did win what looked like kind of easy, easily, but it looked easy. It has not been. You know easy. I learned a lot from my first play, which we we lost really, really badly. <laughs> so uh, it is not all easy, but we we still had fun playing, and uh, it's a good challenge. I it, like it. It doesn't say that they are dogs, so maybe they are indeed jackals, unless there's something I'm missing. In the rules. I don't know. Hamster Wheel is amazing. Also on the Kickstarter. And so, yeah. I we won. We won. I don't know. That looks a little bit like a dog. <laughs> we won. With the, with the tongue hanging out of his mouth. That's probably true. Uh, a dog jackal. <laughs> we were able to defeat the big bad mummy before he made it back to the his... Here. Pharaoh's vault, where he would get ultimate power. Yeah. How many people can play? It says one to four. One to four. Ages eight and up. So be sure to check it out. We have time. That's right. So like it. don't wait or it'll be too late. It's only 25 bucks. Back that Kickstarter. Uh, and that is Run, Run, Run by 25th Century Games. And if you enjoyed this teach and playthrough, you can get more just like it on our YouTube channel. Just search for Board Gamer Steph. Or you can join us on twitch.tv slash Board Gamer Steph every Wednesday and Sunday night at 5 p.m. Central, where we play through three games or more every single stream. So come join us on Twitch in, in the chat, and that's where we play all, all the games. games. And for those on Twitch, we will be right back. We have so many games to play. 